Hey man, I'm still wounded right now. It's Friday afternoon about 2.30. I got the call a while ago. Boy, I need some help in the woods. So they down. I got some supplies on the way. So I'll be back in just a little bit so y'all can see what's going on. Which one? Which shaft is it? The main one. So the coupler's still the coupler's still all right and everything. It's just a shaft. No, it's just the shaft. The only shaft that we didn't change when we done the gearbox out of the main shaft. That we changed the bearings on the ends of the right. gears. We didn't change the shaft now because the shaft. But the shaft is broke clean in half. Oh, yeah. Here. It ain't no problem to see that. Yeah. Here you go, Kevin. Hold this court this recording right now. Yeah. Hold this and turn it. Okay, he's got I can see it right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Broke yeah. slap in half, man. Look at that. They didn't make no noise. That's crazy. Yeah, and I mean it ain't rusted like it's been broken. It's no. it had a it vibration. Just broke. Yeah. I wonder uh what would have caused that thing to break then like that? You reckon got something else going on in there inside the box? You reckon something binded in the box? Could you have, you're going to have to open the box anyhow, right? Yeah. Well, you may as well it's set gotta, it down here and gotta, start looking. It's got to come back the box. Right. All right, so that, that's the, is that the, that's the whole gear box, right? Well, the, oh, gear, right. the, gear, the box gear box is, box is, is that little housing. What you got to do to get it out of there? Nothing. Hopefully and all that, I can just take and slide that off and bump it out from another way. So that's normally that's all you got to do. Really. <laughs> if you got a shaft, that's That thing didn't. That thing didn't load or anything on you like something binded up, Kevin. Yeah, didn't we put a new coupler on it when we had it apart in uh yeah also. You can see where it's starting to bring them out there on the end. We got mm -hmm. we got something unlocked up in there, man. This done tried to twist the splines yeah. out of it there. That's a lot of force right there, man.
happen. Some wheels take off there. Yeah, the electrical wire. Getting on a 45 air off, or getting on. Let's see. Yeah. On a Saturday. Up for it to break its two-inch shaft in the <laughs> It didn't just break because it wanted to. Actually, running that whole length, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We'll see if them turn. Turn. <laughs> yeah, that pump was over $10,000 about three or four years ago. Three years ago, wasn't it? Pump ain't locked up. That's good. It hey, wouldn't have turned. All right, so y'all saw it. Uh, that pump that we just took off of there was a reman pump. We put that one on in August of 2014. We actually had the gearbox went out on it. And we just went ahead and the machine had about, I forget how many hours it had on it. It had a lot of hours on it. And we went ahead and opted to go ahead and put a pump on it then because when you bought the pump, you got the gearbox also too so that's what we did but that pump never was right we run that pump it run for a couple of days and something snapped on that pump one day and it just it just loaded the machine it just just like you flipped the switch on it it just bogged the machine and we adjusted we had stribbling out many many times adjusting on it trying to get it back right and we couldn't get it back right so then we thought well it's because the engine was getting a little bit weak too and so we put an engine in it later on the engine was about then lost all its compression we put an engine in it that was in august we put an engine in the machine in april of 2015 and that still didn't fix it the pump just was not right so in october of 2016 then that gearbox on the pump we just took off of it disintegrated 
and uh, those two big gears that you see in there lost some teeth off of them. So we rebuilt. There's a video on my uh, in my collection here of us building that gearbox back and putting it back on there. So we did that, and the pump just never has been right. So when this happened right here, the pump is free, but something happened because it it twisted those splines. It tried to twist those splines inside of that coupler, and then it snapped that shaft and half snapped it all at one time. But the pump's free, but something malfunctioned in there. So I don't know if you could just keep turning. We didn't tear the pump apart, but you could replace the pump, the shaft on it, but you'd have to build the whole pump. So what we did, we just opted. We were just having trouble with the pump anyhow. We opted just to go ahead and, and get another pump for it. So, you can't buy a new pump for that thing. A lot of the deer stuff on things like that, major components, you can't buy new. You have to buy reman. And y'all know our feelings about reman stuff. John Deere reman stuff is no good. Uh, they know that. They In October when we were having trouble, they actually sent a guy to our job from John Deere reman. And that's my biggest complaint with John one of my biggest complaints with John Deere is is the stuff is fine while it's new, the pumps and everything like that, but when you get into the remanufactured stuff, it is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. They're they're really lacking. So I mean this stuff that machine there's a half million dollars. You can't just run it that one pump and then get rid of it and and, and you know, runs, you know, trade it or whatever, it ain't gonna happen. We wanna rebuild it, but the quality of their rebuild stuff is no good. So I don't know if that's part of the problem because it's only been on there uh, two and a half years. And the machine now has got uh, um, right at 15,000 hours on that processor, what it's got on it. But uh, the pump, I don't know what it's going to cost. The last one that we bought, you, when you buy it, you get the pump and the gearbox both together. Uh, it was eleven or $12,000 or something like that. So hopefully, maybe we'll get one in Stribling. We'll be putting it back. We ordered it through uh, Stribling at Tupelo. And so they're going to, when we get it through Stribling and we get their mechanic to put it on, we get a double the warranty on it. So their mechanic's gonna come down. Jay's gonna be there too. We're gonna have two mechanics there. So there we're gonna have a stribbling mechanic where we can get the warranty and then Jay's gonna be there helping him too. Of course, Jay was a stribbling mechanic for nearly 20 years. So Jay's gonna be there to help him and get this thing back going. So in the meantime, uh, the 820, our 822, our Tiger Cat 822 with our Warthal 622 head has been loaded on a detach and it'll go up there first thing Monday morning and that's what we'll process with. I'm still gonna be off, I'm gonna be off till Thursday with my neck, y'all can see my, see I don't have a band-aid on it right now, y'all can, like, can see it right there pretty good, but see it's cut, it's pretty good cut right there, man. <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna do right there, people. Yes, as good as mine, why? why I went out I have no idea uh, you know whatever but that's just stuff that we deal with is uh as loggers luckily we were able to get Jay out there real quick and get it snatched off to see what was going on but Kevin said it never loaded on him and never done anything and just quit it just it, the engine never revved never done nothing it just thing just quit is all it done so that's where we're at. Uh, the reason I went up there, I took a 55-gallon uh, drum, empty one up there uh, to them because you got to get the oil out of the hydraulic tank to take the uh, hydraulic pump off of it. All right, so giveaway. Arctic, Arctic right here, man. Tumbler, 30-ounce tumbler here from Vinyl Addictions. See it right there? Cotton Top 3 etched. It's no vinyl on it. And then TDK logging, Columbus, Mississippi on that side. This comes from uh, Vinyl Addictions right there. See Tiffany. There's all of her information. Tiffany Watkins, all of her information on there. 
she etched this in there for me. She made me two of these. She wanted me to give one of these away. So what we're gonna do, all you gotta do to win this thing is just comment down below. It, you ain't just whatever you want to put down there. If you comment, you're getting entered in the draw. I don't care where you live in the in the world. I'll ship it to you wherever you're wherever you. I don't care. So if you want a shot at winning this, just comment down below on this video. It's going to start when this video publishes, which is the, the 5th, March the 5th. And it's going to run through next Sunday, which is, hang on, should be the 12th. Be the 12th. That Sunday morning, when I get up that Sunday morning, I'm going to do a random comment picker. And I'm going to run it. And I'm going to pick whoever gets picked. I'm going to win this cup right here. So y'all just comment down below and everything. Uh, I appreciate all the views, the messages, the Snapchats, all that stuff I've been getting. Uh, appreciate all that. Um, give me a thumbs up, man. Thumbs up and uh, subscribe to me if you like my stuff. Subscribers are still really growing. We're creeping toward 20,000. Now getting, getting on up there and... Uh, you can find me on Snapchat, Twitter, or Instagram. All those are Cotton Top 3, C-O-T-O-E-N-T-O-P. Just one T with a three on the end of it. Any of that. And just follow me there if you want, because I put a lot of pictures on Instagram that I don't put, you know, anywhere else or anything like that. So you can you can find me there. And uh, so I hope you all have a good week. Later, taters.